In my more joyous moments, I feel a grin crawl across my face as I think about my most adored of creatures. Nothing makes the appetite rumble quite like preparing a fish for consumption and finding my little worm buddies wriggling around just inside the flesh I'm about to eat. Let's take a special moment and take a look at every angler's favorite topic, fish parasites. Over the years, every angler is bound to encounter a parasite or two, so let's take a look at a few of the more common freeloaders that make their homes in the bodies of the freshwater species you love. You know, we might as well start with the yellow grub, also known as Clinostomum. These little yellow guys are in the family of Trematoda, aka Fluke. They mooch off of several hardworking creatures during their multi-stage life cycle. First, the eggs hatch in the water into free-swimming larvae that start off infesting snails right in the foot. From there, they multiply asexually and move on to infesting fish. These fish are then eaten by fish-eating birds, where the adult flukes take up residence in the bird's throat. Ugh. From there, the birds harf the eggs into the water, and the whole nasty cycle rolls on. You might be saying to yourself, come on, Coke, these grubs aren't so bad. They're just cute little fellows just trying to have enough shirts to last the end of the week. I don't know. I've put these guys under the scope and I can tell you they're basically miniature faceless monsters. If they had a face, it would probably look something like this. The only thing they have going for them is they don't live in the butthole. And on that note, let's move on to those that do. Tapeworms. If I know anything about dignity, it's that you won't find it living in a fish's gut box. Regardless, these lowly beings are often found daintily dangling out of the gooch of freshwater fish. When you are cleaning fish and you rupture the intestines, or as they say in Latin, the ass tracks, you often get yet another look at the slender and translucent bodies of these moochers, writhing about in their loathsome business. The life cycle of the tapeworm follows a similar path as the yellow grub. Stage 1, pieces of the worm packed with eggs blast into the water riding the rancid feces of an infected host. These worm chunks erupt dispersing eggs into the lake. Stage 2, these eggs incubate and are consumed by small crustaceans called copepods. Stage 3, these tasty nuggets are then consumed by minnows which act as an intermediate host. Stage 4, these minnows are consumed by larger fish where the worms take hold until it itself is eaten and the worms are passed on to the next host, i.e. fish eating birds, bears, otters, and your grandma. The cycle goes on from there. You don't even want to know how long these worms can get. Alright, I'll tell you. 30 feet long, and they can live for 20 years. Barf. I think I only have the stomach to fill you in on one more that's commonly found in freshwater fish. That parasite is known as black spot. Often this appears as multiple black spots on the outside of the fish, or in more heavily infected fish, inside the flesh is small black cysts. It kind of looks like pepper. The life cycle is pretty much the same as yellow grubs, except they live in the ass of the fish eating bird. Different strokes, you know? All of these parasites are easily neutralized by practicing safe food handling and proper cooking procedures. As far as I'm aware, only the tapeworm is transferable to humans, so it's best not to spin one around your finger before scratching your buttocks. Seems simple to most, but you know, there's guys out there. You know this was fun to make, but I had to look at a lot of pictures of nasty parasites, so hopefully I've transferred this into a cartoon to make it a little easier on the eyes. But when you see the stuff in real life, you know, your stomach might turn. It's kind of rough to look at. So enjoy this. I hope it answered your questions for you. Talk to you guys later.